Hey everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and last week we posted a video of a well-executed one-on-one uh, from the World Juniors tournament that uh, happened this past year, 2015 World Juniors. Um, it was Russia versus Switzerland, and uh, in that I showed what I felt was a, a pretty well-executed one-on-one. What I want to do in this video is kind of expand on that and talk a little bit about the strategic side of one-on-ones and the tactical side. When I'm talking tactics, what that really means is combining more than one individual skill to use together to play the play properly. So I want to talk a little bit about that, uh, a little bit about the strategy on the one-on-one, and hopefully kind of give you an X's and O's approach of what a really well-executed one-on-one should look like. So let's go ahead and pull up the rink, and uh, what we've got here is just like a basic diagram. So we've got the opposing player with the puck. This is going to be a forward who's going to be breaking out of the zone one-on-one with this defenseman. So the very first thing you want to do as a defenseman um, when you realize that there's about to be a one-on-one is you want to get your speed up quickly backwards. Um, Once your speed's up quickly, that's that's going to guarantee that you're not going to get beat right from the get-go. And then from there, you adjust your speed based on how fast the other player is going. But you want to be quick off that line. We use this, uh, I call it a two-step crossover start. Eventually, we'll do a video where we'll be able to actually diagram or uh, not diagram, but a video where we obviously have to demonstrate some of this stuff. But uh, a quick two-step crossover start going backwards, get your speed up quickly, make a little bit of distance between you and this player, and then you can read and adjust from there. Now, um, the next thing you're going to want to make sure is you need to play your play your angle properly. So what I mean by that is the angle that you're skating backwards. So I've been working with my, I'm coaching a group of, most of them are seven and eight years old, and we've been starting to work on how to play a one-on-one properly while playing it backwards. And this is something that's a little bit new for some of these kids. And so we've been doing drills and we've been working on this. And what you start seeing in the game is the players read that there's about to be a one-on-one. And so they start backing up and they're backing up, but they're going at a bad angle. They're actually backing straight up, okay? And if you back straight up, that basically, um, even if you got your speed and everything, basically what that does is it leaves open space in the middle and makes it so that the opponent doesn't really even have to make a move. He just skates towards the middle and you're beat, okay? So the idea is you don't want to get beat to the inside. And how you do that is by changing the angle that you're backing up. So basically, you're backing up. If we drew a straight line back from that player, it would be a straight line back to the post, Okay, so that's kind of the angle that we're looking at. Now, obviously, we're not hopefully not going all the way back to the post before we make that play. So we're going to cut that line down to about there. So what that does is it makes it so that if this player is going to beat you, he has to beat you wide. Okay, and to beat you wide, he's got a longer way to go before he can get to the net. Because let me see if I can draw this actually. Um, not only does he have to get past you, so he has to he has to get past you, but get past you with enough space that he can drive and cut to the net afterwards. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you play that angle wrong, the player can just you know cut inside or there, there are other things that can go wrong where, where you really don't even make it a challenge for that player. So you wanna make it as hard as possible. And the advantage that the defenseman has on this is that he can skate straight back. The uh, shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? So you wanna cut that straight back to the post. Now, there's a few more things I want to talk about along that those same lines, but we'll get there in a second. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to adjust and you're trying to read and make sure that your north-south um, distance between this player is about two stick lengths as you're crossing the blue line. So the blue line is kind of that critical point. In fact, let's draw a little uh, little square there because that's the that's really our our make or break point. Now, if you're not exactly right at the blue line, there's still ways you can adjust. But this is what we're shooting for. We're shooting for two stick lengths as the players are crossing the blue line. And that's two stick lengths north and south. So let me diagram what that means. Um, And let's, in fact, let's get rid of some of these lines. And then we'll move these players back. Okay? So remember, our defenseman is going straight back towards the post. Okay? Generally speaking, now there may be a little bit of instance where you're going to come over a little bit. But generally speaking, that's what we want. Um, this player is coming in and most likely he's going to be going wide because that's what you're trying to do. And assuming we want to have that two stick lengths, okay? So let's draw in some sticks and we can kind of show you what this actually looks like on the ice. Okay, so you've got the defenseman with one stick length and you've got the forward with the other stick length. Sorry, going the wrong way there, okay? 
So we're looking something like this, okay? Now, as you can see, if they were side by side, like if they were, if this guy was over here or if the defenseman was over there, that would be two stick lengths, meaning you could touch your blade of his stick with your blade, with the blade of your stick, right? Now, why do I say north-south and not east-west? Well, north-south, I'm meaning up and down the ice, right? So the reason why is because what you see often, especially with younger defensemen, is they get to this point, they've actually played the, the play relatively well, they're backing up towards the post, they get to this point and they think, oh, I gotta be two stick lengths away. So then they start cheating over, sliding over. Now, as soon as the defenseman makes the move, now the forward's got him because now he can cut inside. The defenseman's already on his way away from the positioning he should be in, and uh, it messes us up. So what we want, we want to time it out so we're about two stick lengths away, north-south wise, as we're crossing the blue line. Now, at this point, you're basically just going to wait the other defenseman, or wait, the defenseman's basically going to wait the forward out. Now, I've mentioned this in, in previous posts, and I think maybe in a soundbite or two, but, um, you know, when you're, when you're talking like business school and, and negotiations, um, you know, one of these old, you know, kind of old letter of the law kind of rules is whoever states the first number loses, right? Um, because, you know, if, if whoever states that first number, the other player, the other person knows you know whether he can go up or down from there and and basically it's whoever shows their hand first loses um so it's kind of the same thing we we want to make the forward make the first move we want to let him come to us and why is that well because if 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 everything was left as is the defenseman is backing up towards the post at a good speed at the right speed the forward is attacking wide at you know as fast as he can he or she can well, eventually it's gonna to get to the point where you're somewhere down here, right? Something like this. And the forward is either gonna to have to take a bad angle shot or come to you. Because this is a bad angle shot, so if he's a decent forward, he's gonna to wanna to get a better angle before he shoots. So at some point, he's gonna to have to come towards the middle. And as soon as he comes towards the middle, that's his move. You let him come to you, stick goes between the legs, shoulder to chest, free hand on the shoulder, right? And that's another thing that's uh, that's a quick little tactic is I hate to see one-on-ones played with two hands on the stick, okay? Two hands on the stick really limits what you're able to do. It limits your forecheck. It limits your ability to play the body properly, in my opinion. So um, get that one hand on the stick as a defenseman. But as this player comes to you, now it's really all you're doing, watching the chest, stick between the legs, shoulder to chest, free hand on the, free, or free hand on the shoulder, um, and you're, you're controlling it. Your idea here is not to take the puck. Um, you can poke check and miss. You can poke check and if you get it, great. If you can poke check and miss all day long and your body will still stay in proper position. What we don't wanna do is have a sweep check. Or what we don't wanna do is have this defenseman panic and go over to the forward. Then, you know, as soon as that defenseman makes his move, then he's lost. We wanna let that forward come to the defense. If you play it properly, manage your gap properly, it gets to the point where the forward has to come to you, okay? He's either gonna to try to beat you wide and drive in, or he's gonna to try to cut in, in front of you and, and take the shot. Either way, you're gonna take him, okay? If you've got your speed right, you're well skating defenseman, you play your angles properly, taking him wide is not gonna be an option. Um, cutting inside, you just put the stick through the legs, shoulder to chest, free hand on the shoulder, and you've got him controlled. The idea is you want to separate the puck from the man at that point, okay? Or separate the man from the puck. And this is kind of like, uh, you know, one of these things you learn as a peewee or younger, but this puck's not going to score itself, right? It has to be on somebody's stick for it to go in. And so uh, you separate that man from the puck and you've done your job. That's, that's really what we're looking for there. Let's go through some other scenarios and just kind of give a baseline on, on what we're looking at here. So let's say that we've got to the blue line. And let's say that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it's a really well skating forward. Uh, maybe our defenseman isn't one of our fastest guys, or maybe this forward has tricked him. You know, maybe he's, he's been saving some in the tank. Maybe he's been sandbagging up the ice. Really, he's only going about 90%. And this defenseman read it as him going 100%, so he saved that extra 10% in the tank. Now he hits the blue line, he turns on the Jets, and he goes, okay? Here's another area where we see youngsters making mistakes is the youngster is going, he's backing up. All of a sudden, he realizes he's about to be taken to town. And this guy, let me just finish drawing. Let me get this guy a little bit further ahead. Okay, so this guy's maybe about here, okay? And as the defenseman sees that he's about to be beat, he makes a pivot and then chases this guy, okay? If you make the pivot and chase 
the player, you're toast. You're dead before it even starts because he's got body positioning on you. You're chasing him right up the butt. You're not going to be able to catch him. And if you do catch him, you're not in position to control his stick, right? So that's a big mistake we see is we see players pivoting. They realize they're beat, they pivot, and they chase. What we want to do is pivot and maintain that same line that we were on that takes us straight back to that post, okay? Because then, yeah, maybe he beat us. Maybe he got a step on us. But he still has further to go than you do. You pivot, you go straight back to your post, and he still has to come to you. He either has to shoot from the wide side or come to you. And then at that point, um, basically you're going stick on stick, shoulder on shoulder, and you're angling him, keeping him outside. Um, you know, if, if, if any one-on-one -on -one really is, there's, there's two components to it, right? There's the defenseman's component, and there's the goalie's job. So if the defenseman does his job, the goalie ought to be able to do his job. The defenseman's job is to make sure that this guy can't cut out in front of the goalie. Okay, so if the defenseman takes this guy, keeps him wide, and the shot comes from anywhere from like this arrow line over, if it goes in, then the goalie has missed his role. Okay, it shouldn't ever go in from that angle. So if the defenseman plays it properly, and again, we're letting this guy come to him. Okay, so you're taking away the lane to the post, letting the guy come to you. Um, it's you still even when you're beat you're still not beat because you know if, if you if you're capable of recognizing when you're about to be beat making the pivot and then taking back the lane of the post you still shouldn't be able to get you know that guy still should be able to get around you he should still be able to play it properly and then again we're going stick on stick shoulder on shoulder there so those are a couple of the tips i think you know when when, when we're talking one-on-ones there's a, really a lot that goes into it there's um, individual skills you know skating puck control uh, not puck control sorry um skating pivots, stick positioning, body positioning, angling. There's all that that goes into it. But then there's also like the strategic part. Like what am I actually trying to do here? And uh, my old man, is uh, he was my coach growing up. And one thing that he used to say that I really, you know, the older I get, the more I see, the more I believe this, is you don't have to be a great hockey player to be a great defenseman. You don't have to be the best skater. You don't have to have the best, you know, the best shot. You don't have to have the best, uh, you know, best skills, raw skills. But you can be a great defenseman by being a smart defenseman. And really, I think that's what it boils down to. I mean, as long as you're skating and your other skills aren't bad enough to like hinder yourself, you know, if you can execute a basic backwards stride, if you can execute a basic pivot, really what it comes down to is understanding the strategy, understanding uh, your angles, understanding where the potential scoring threats are and how to limit them. Um, you know, and then on offensively, understanding shot selection, understanding release, when to release the puck, where to shoot it, um, you know, so that it's tippable or reboundable. Um, all those things uh, is, is really what makes a great defenseman. Shot blocking, um, you know, good <laughs> understanding the mechanics of shot blocking, understanding the, the importance and knowing how to keep pucks in on the blue line. Those are the types of things. Those are the details that really make great defensemen. And, it, and most of those have nothing to do with how smooth your stride looks or how well you stick handle or, um, you know, even how hard you hit, really. I mean, it's about separating the man from the puck. It's about playing the angles right. It's about understanding um, defensive strategy. You know, we, we talk about scoring strategy. Well, it's the same thing when you're protecting goals against, and that's defensive strategy. And so once you understand those things, understand how to do it, really to play, uh, you know, the, to be a great defenseman doesn't take a ton of raw skill. It just takes good enough skills and good understanding of the strategic side of things. So hopefully that helps. If uh, you find this video useful, make sure you visit us at weisstechhockey.com for more drills, skills, uh, instructional videos, and stuff like this that will help you to improve your coaching and improve your game.